Every psychonaut explorer needs their Houston on the ground. And even if you're tripping solo, it's good to have someone that you can at least call. And when I was deep in my recent psilocybin journey, I felt the urgent need to talk to somebody that was on the ground level of reality. And that's exactly what I did whenever I talked to Fireside Project, which is the world's first psychedelic hotline for people tripping and in distress. So consider this kind of like a hippie Yelp review of their service. Fireside has only been around for about two years. Coincidentally, it's about as long as I've been making my YouTube videos. And what they do is provide a free voice call or text support to anybody during or after their psychedelic experiences. Nothing is real. Is Strawberry Fields Nothing is Real hitting a little too close to home? Call 1-800-FIRESIDE. So I heard about them, but I actually recommended them to a friend before trying it myself. They had a pretty good experience with it by texting Fireside, so I thought I would give it a try just out of curiosity to see what it was like. It's not that I thought I would need the support, but it actually ended up being that I did need at least somebody to talk to. We'll get into that later. So immediately after I consumed three grams of lemon tech, I decided to preemptively open a line of communication so I sent a text to Fireside, basically right after I took them. I send them a text saying, hello. They answer a few minutes later and they say, is this regarding a current or past psychedelic experience? And I say future because technically I'm not tripping yet, even though I already took them. And they said that due to legal reasons, they couldn't actually talk to me unless I'm actually tripping or you know, have had my experience already. I guess there's no way for you to know that unless you read their website first. So I'm gonna go ahead and link you guys to that if you wanna find out about it. It wasn't too big of a deal though. I knew I'd be tripping soon and I would just text them whenever I was. Fast forward about an hour and this thing is coming on strong. I even said it out loud to my friend, like the loving alien mothership has landed and it was, it became overwhelming very fast. And to be honest with you, the come up was a lot more intense than what I had bargained for. I felt something inside resisting the dissolving of my normal self. Even though I wanted it to happen, there was something kind of like your hind brain that's like, are we under attack? Are we good? Are we good? And you kind of can't help that. Similar to people who have anxiety attacks, even if your mental state is cool and calm, it's something kind of unconscious that's freaking out in your body. I did what I could to keep myself calm. I closed my eyes and I breathed deeply and I would notice that I felt uneasy when my breathing was shallow, but I was just too kind of concentrated to remember to breathe deeply. So I would have to remind myself to do that and remind myself that I'm safe, you know, this is all just the substance. My body is physically safe, but you know, when this thing's coming on so strong, even for the seasoned experts, it's really hard to remind yourself of that all the time. So you try to nip it in the bud early, but this thing was coming in waves. I was getting fluctuations of total awe and amazement at these visions that I started to have, but also this feeling of terror. It was really intense. At this point in the trip, I really felt like I could use somebody who was on the ground, baseline, sober reality. The idea of having a tether back to somebody that had normal consciousness felt very comforting as I was accepting that my new reality was this alien uh, construction zone in outer space. I was just feeling overwhelmed with the onslaught it's a really tough transition going from nothing is happening, but I think this wall wants to move to seeing 3D vaulted spaces with apparent entities and insects and all of that. So I just wanted to kind of throw a tether down. I didn't necessarily feel freaked out enough to want to call 
the hotline because I still had my friend who was on the same dose and tripping just as hard as me. So I decided to grab my phone and text the hotline number. This is where the difficulties of this concept come up because the basic idea of texting someone seemed completely foreign and strange and difficult for me to do at that time. After staring at my phone and thinking long and hard, I managed to send a text saying, I am tripping now. <laughs> it took me so long to just finally like get that, like I didn't know what to say because it was just a weird thing because the last message was them telling me, yeah, we can't talk to you unless you're tripping. And so I was like, what do I say to indicate that I'm in it now? And I was just like, I'm tripping now. <laughs> it was like that one episode of SpongeBob where he spends like all this time writing and then it zooms in on the paper and it's just the. In that text that I sent back, I also added thank you. And even just typing that felt so, it, it felt like I was something else pretending to be a human. And I was like, oh yes, thank you. Like. I am a people, that's what people say. They say thank you in a message. It just felt like so detached and funny. Then I thought about how there was a human on the other end of the line who had donated their time and energy to doing this. So obviously that means that they care and that they believe in the power of, uh, you know, the healing capabilities of psychedelics. And so I felt good about that and I sent another text saying like, thank you for dedicating your time and energy. They said, thanks for reaching out, safe journeying, let us know if you need any other support and we'll be here till 11 p.m. Pacific time. My brain struggled to comprehend time zones as I was rapidly ascending into the peak of my trip. And I asked them after thinking long and hard again, I was like, thank you. Can you tell me please what that is in central time? Which is normally a super easy conversion, but I'm sure some of you understand when you're tripping this hard, things like this are just not in your wheelhouse anymore. They got back to me after a minute and said, I believe that's 1 a.m., which made me feel really relieved because it was 9 p.m. in my time, the trip had just started, so that means that they close almost exactly when the end of my trip would be. So I felt really good about the timing of that. After that, I told the volunteer, like, I took some mushrooms, I'm with a friend, uh, we're both tripping, but everything feels foreign to me, but in a cool way, which is exactly what I said. And I, I was trying to indicate that, like, how, uh, foreign I felt to just basic, you know, human conversation and all of this stuff. Our whole interaction just seemed so strange and foreign to me, but it was like in an interesting way. I also told them in the message, like, it would be nice to talk to someone who is on ground level because, you know, for me at this point, I was on the verge of feeling like it was too much. Like, I felt like I got this close to being totally overwhelmed and I, I needed some kind of safety rail like hold on guys and you know when you're with a friend that that presence is comforting and I'm sure that helped a lot but if they're tripping just as hard as you it's like what are they gonna say to you they're they're not gonna be in a position to guide you they're also lost in their own plethora of you know epiphanies and thoughts and everything so I needed somebody, I needed an anchor. And they responded to me saying that with, very cool, lol, did you wanna talk on the phone or text? And I just responded to them saying, texting is cool. And when you're in this open and sensitive state of mind, you can pick up on vibes, you know? And even through the phone, I could tell that there was a sense of kind of like professional, like detachment. And again, this is for legal reasons because they can't pretend to be your therapist, which I understand. And even looking back at the text messages in a sober state, it doesn't seem like too walled off or like detached or anything like that. But I guess I was, I don't know. It's like if you're talking to another person who is like really there for you and really like 
okay with being kind of your therapist or maybe they're professional maybe they're just a friend or a dear friend but they they would probably be more receptive and more like kind of throw more love your way off the get-go something like that at least i just i i felt that sense of kind of you know this is professional you know there's there's definitely a clear like boundary which is good um it's just like something i noticed in this very sensitive state of mind once I got to the peak, it culminated in a just magnificent and cathartic release of uh, movement and emotion and beauty and vision. And it was just a beautiful trip. So I'm definitely still piecing that together in my mind, but I will absolutely make a trip report video very soon about this exact experience but this one really shook me to my core in a way that hasn't happened in years since i really first started taking psychedelics so it's gonna take a little more than just like two or three weeks to actually piece it together and integrate it even before i tell the story and, and that way I'm better able to connect the dots. So anyway, that's for another time. So I gave the fireside volunteer a little update saying, hey, the trip's going great now. I just needed to get up and move around and, and listen to some good music. They said back to me, that sounds like a beautiful time. Thanks for checking in. How are you feeling? I told them I'm great. I'm definitely coasting now. You know, I'm on the plateau of my trip and everything's going positively now so i tell them you know like thanks for talking to me i think i got it from here and have a good night so ultimately i think this service is a great idea especially if someone is you know alone and their trip is going even scarier than that uh you know calling someone on the phone could be way better than having no one at all and just kind of sulking in your own craziness so I think that is a fantastic tool that will help a lot of people. Like I mentioned earlier, the one obvious downside is the inability to actually communicate while you're in this tripping state of mind. You know, words can seem so feeble and jarbled and kind of like nonsensical whenever you're in this state of mind. And the other thing I noticed is, you know, there is that kind of detached wall of separation which it, it was like friendly don't get me wrong but it made me realize that one of the most important things about having a trip sitter is that physical presence especially if they they give you some kind of like reassuring touch or like holding your hand which those things should be agreed upon beforehand if you are with a physical sitter but it made me realize how that's almost the most important thing if you're gonna have a sitter to have that you know physical warmth and presence with you you know because one of my most life-changing experiences was because i had a friend there who held my hand during a very difficult uh, come up on lsd and and just having the calming vibe of a person is is one of the big things that helps you stay calm and, and grounded in those situations so it's been interesting because this experience made me realize all of that stuff like what is important about having a trip sitter and you don't realize what you have until you don't have it and and this experience with a hotline has helped me understand the benefits of having a physical trip sitter um, but there definitely are benefits to having someone on the phone that you can talk to whether it's a friend or a trained volunteer at fireside and it's totally up to you if you want to use a service like this or not especially if you're more experienced but it's always good to just have options and backup plans but if you're someone who's new or a little less experienced and you plan on taking a big dose i really do recommend having this especially if you don't have you know a sitter with you which i wouldn't advise anyone to do but if you are going to do it this is a good way to have kind of support on the line. At the very least, save the number in your phone and keep them in mind for during and after your trip. And like I just mentioned, they also provide services of talking to you after your trip to kind of help you 
make sense of your situation. And uh, I was actually doing that while I was writing the script to this video. So shout out to Jeremy who did his best to help me make sense of the space caterpillar situation that I had. These people can't provide you with answers, closure, or the key to life's mysteries, but sometimes it's nice to just have a sympathetic human to lean on. If you're looking for more ways to optimize your trip and do it more safely, I made a video called The Psychedelic Explorer's Guide. It's based on one of the books of the same name, written by one of the OG psychedelic therapy pioneers. So I'm gonna link that right here. So check that out if you wanna do it right. If you wanna hear the full trip report of this experience that I was talking about, check out the playlist that I have full of all my trip reports. And whenever the video is uploaded, it will be part of that playlist. So that's gonna be it, y'all. Peace.